So, hi guys, uh, Mr. Goodbos here. This is the first video for uh, data management in class. I've got a bunch of other videos that are, were made for my online version of this course, but this is for the uh, regular class over at Beal. It's going to be a bit of a longer video. As you can see over here, this is for Unit 1, Days 2, 3, and 4. So, I think I'll make uh, just the one video for all three days. Okay, so here we go. We start off with sets. So let me change this color so we can see a little better. Let's go with red. A set is a collection of distinguishable objects or elements. That's easier for me to say or whatever. Uh, so let's go through this in class. We would have come up with a, a bunch of uh, animals and let's take, let's write down 10 animal names. So let's say we had a cat and we had a dog. That's his dog. And we had a uh, cheetah and a gazelle, and we had a hen, I believe, my example that I'm going to use here, a crab, uh, what's that, two, four, six, uh, shark, and what you do is, just put a comma between all these, so cat, dog, cheetah, gazelle, hen, crab, shark, uh, penguin, penguin, and octopus, okay? So that is a set of uh, animals, and we'll call that the set of class animals, den denoted by the big letter S. So when you do set notation, you have the set brackets. That actually kind of looks like a face, but, uh, but no, let's be serious here. Okay, so you use those set brackets, and you put a comma between each element of the set. Okay, an element is a member of the set. So for example, here, I'm going to say that dog because I have the word dog here, if you can read it or not, is part of set S, and to denote that we say dog is part of S. Now that's an S, that's not an E, that just is something that looks like this, okay, kind of like a sideways U, and that means that this, the dog, or whatever we had here, shark, any of these things, is part of the set S. If you had something that wasn't part of the set S, so for example, I don't think we have the word gorilla, or the animal gorilla has our S in S, you do the same thing, but in math, you're probably going to be able to guess what we do. It's not part of S, so we say you're not part of S. We put a line through it. Actually, that was pretty bad. Let me try that again. We say, hey, you're not part of S, so we put a line through it. So gorilla is not part of S. You can look at sets by listing them with commas, things with commas, or you can talk about, you can define them with words, which I don't really like to do, but you can do that. So the set of positive single digit uh, integers. So we're doing the same things here. Two, four, six, and eight are part of my set. These are also the single digit um, positive integers, so 2, 4, 6, and 8. Or you could also use some sort of notation builder. Um, so, for example, here we said it's the set where of uh, the number t, where t is a positive integer and t is between or less, greater than 0 and less than 10. So that, again, would be all the positive integers between 0 and 10. So just different ways to do it. Usually we're going to list, we're going to list our sets. Okay. Subsets are part of sets. So, for example, if I want to say uh, um, I'm going to look at, at something called the set of A, and I'm going to say that is the four-legged animals in the set of S. So, A will be a subset of S. So, let's go through our list, and I think if I didn't mess this up, we have cat is a four-legged animal, dog is four-legged, cheeto is four-legged, and gazelle. And I hopefully, I didn't miss it. Okay, so... Something like that. A bunch of loops here, a couple of L's and E's, whatever. Okay, so close the set. So cat, dog, cheetah, and gazelle, that's a subset, okay, because they're part of the set of S. An element of A, uh, all elements of A are in S, so A is called a subset of S, and that is denoted like this. A is a subset of S. That looks like a little bit like a big C, but it's more of a U. So it looks a lot like this up here without the line up in there. So A is a subset of S. A primed, okay, so A with a prime or A, sometimes you see this also, AC is the complement of A. It's made of the elements of S that aren't in A. So if we go back and look at what was in S, what did we not write in A? We did not have shark, uh, hen, okay, shark. We did not have, um, on my list, let me make sure you have my list here, shark. So we had cat, dog, gone, cheetah, gazelle, gone. We did not have penguin. Okay, that's not a four-legged animal. So these are all the non-four-legged animals, right? Octopus, octopus, uh, crab. I don't know how many legs it has, but we're going to say it's not four. Um, 
What's this? Cat, dog, cheetah, gazelle, penguin. We got penguin. We got an octopus. Did I add two ten here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. What did I miss? My list that I have. Cat, dog, cheetah, gazelle, hen, hen, crab, shark, oh, cardinal. Cardinal. I can use smaller. Anyway, cardinal should have been up there. Anyway, there's ten there. My mistake. First mistake. Not the last. I'll tell you that right now. Cardinal is also in there also. Okay, so so that's it. Uh, we can also talk about empty set. The empty set is something like this. Let Q be the subset of animals above with with nine, 19 legs. So we look at all of the animals in the subset or set S and say any of these have 19 legs, none of them do. So we call this the empty set, and it looks like this. Just empty set, you just put the brackets with nothing in it. But, but you're gonna be excited right now because a lot of you have shown this before. I uh, used this before, but you've used it incorrectly. It's also denoted by that. So I'm sure you've sh you've done that before and said that means uh, zero or whatever, but it actually means nothing. So nothing means um, there's nothing that is in the set A, those 10 animals that have 19 legs. So it's the set of nothing or the empty set. Okay, so that's pretty exciting, I'd say. Uh, let's keep going. We can try these questions here. We can say, do things like this and go through here and make sets. You can go ahead and do that on your own. Factors of 24, for example. What you would do is put your bracket and say, um, now the factors of 24, this is actually a pretty good question. The factors of 24, you can, you can work this out for 1 and 24, 2 and 12, okay, and then 3 and 8, and 4 and 6, okay. Now when we when we list the set numbers, we're not going to list them like this. You can probably guess we'll go from smallest to biggest. So you go 1, 2, and then you put all the other numbers in there and then it'll 24, okay. So that's that's usually what we do. It's not necessarily wrong to put the factors like this, just to put a bracket around here. But common practice says we, we um, put them in, in numerical order. Okay, so again, this is uh, from SNA from before. So um, we're going to talk about the sets, and now we're going to talk about another subset. So let's do this. We're going to call B. So remember that A was. We can you can go back and see what uh, 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 S was, but let's look at A. A was a four-legged animal. So cat. Uh, what do we have? Cat, dog, cheetah and gazelle okay. and then we're going to do we're going to call b a different subset and why don't we do this we're going to have the ones that are three so we'll say that define another set b is the oh, b is the set of animals with three letters in their name in their name okay so we look at that and we go through it and our animals that had three letters were hen, hen, dog, and cat. Okay, so those were our animals. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about how the, the sets are related to each other by using something called a Venn diagram. Now I'm sure you know what a Venn diagram is, okay? So you usually see two circles like this and they intersect. So over here we're gonna have subset A and subset B. And in the middle, as you probably remember, we're going to put the things that are in both A and B. So if we look at the sets, what's in both A and B? Well, first we start off with cat. Cat is in both. Sure. Okay. So we go through the things that are in A, the elements of A. So cat, dog is also in both. Okay. So there's there's dog. Cat was in both. Cheetah is not. So cheetah is over here. And gazelle is over here. Okay. They're only in A. Okay. Over here, we only have one more thing, which is called, which is the hen. Okay, so hen doesn't have four legs, so it wasn't an A. And we talk about this, and then we can talk about how A and B are related to each other. So A and, and B can be related, or we can look at the union of A and B. So what that is, is if there's A and there's B, we're talking about whatever is in either of them, and including what's in both of them, okay? So it's all of this. It's all of A and all of B. In this case, it is hen, dog, cat. Okay, so hens in there, cat, dog, it's all the animals that we see, cheetah and gazelle. Okay, so that's that. You can close that up like that. Next up, we can talk about the intersection of A and B. So you can probably guess what that is. Okay, this this is a, that should be on the next page. It's issues, that's fine. So the intersection is just this part here. It's what's in both of them. So this is really, when you see the union, you're looking at or, but don't forget, or doesn't mean, uh, or also includes and. Okay, because if I said or, a lot of times you would say or, and this means, well, I'm either one or the other, but that's not the case. When we talk about union, we're talking about and or. Okay, so if they're in both, it counts. Here we're just talking about things that are in both, 
And in this case, what's in both? Just cat and dog. Okay, so the union of A and B is, is that. So A, let me just show you what that is. A, U, B. Uh, sorry, A, U, intersection B is cat and dog. Okay, so now we'll talk more, just some more things here. This is kind of neat stuff, I thought. Let's talk here about the size. Okay, so set size. This is set size. And this is also called the cardinality. So how big are things? So it's really simple. We go through these things and we say how many things were in, how many elements were in S? There were 10 animals. How many were in A? There were four. Okay. If you go back, we talk about what wasn't in A. Well, this is kind of simple, right? If, if four are in A, right? We had the four-legged animals of four of them. There were six that, came, that weren't in there. Okay. You can do it that way. And one way to get it is, is you say, what you can do here is you can take the universal set, which sometimes... Uh, is NU, but we'll use NS, and we subtract from it NA, okay? So the size, the total size, subtract the size of the elements A, have to be what's left, what's not in A, okay? So if we look at that, if we had four things in, in this Venn diagram here, what's on the outside, six things are on the outside, because there's 10 total, okay, if this was A. Okay, and we'll show more, we'll play around with the Venn diagrams a bit more. Uh, B had three things in it, the union, um, sorry, the intersection of, so if we go back, just show you real quick if we go back to the intersection the intersection over here just had two elements the union had one two three four five elements okay so let me just go here so the union had five elements. so there are five things in in this and one way you can you can you can look at this okay so if i have a and i have b so we can kind of ignore this for a second if we have a and we have b and we want to figure out how much are in a or b well what you're going to do is you're going to take a the number of things in A, and you're going to add to the number of things in B, but the problem is you're double counting the intersection. So let's just show that real quick again. If I count everything in A, and I count everything in B, well, I've, I've counted this stuff twice. So what I'm going to do is subtract N intersection B. Okay, so here, let's look at this. What we did here is we said there were four elements here, there were three elements here, that's seven, but I double counted two of them, and that gets me my Okay, you can also keep going. I'm going to rush through this a little bit so you can you can keep going here. Make a Venn diagram to represent your first and last name and all that stuff. So I'm going to skip this one. You can go ahead and do that and come back and look, look at what we did in class. But let's look at this one here. Let's look at, at a situation here where we're, we're going to uh, look at bikes and driver's license. Okay, so for example, I'm going to go through the class and ask people this. How many students are in this class? Let's say 30. How many own a bike? 10. How many have a driver's license? 15. And how many have both? Six. So this is kind of neat. We're going to now try to make a Venn diagram. So just be careful, okay? Because now we're going to we're going to look at this and we'll call this, uh, over here we'll call this bike. And we'll call this D for driver's license. So how many people are have a bike? How many have a driver's license, et cetera? You want to start off with how many people have both. You put that in here. So six people have both. So if six people have both, and I'm looking over here about bikes. Well, 10 people have bikes, but I don't want to put a 10 here, right? Because that would say that 10 people have a, a bike by itself and six have a bike and a driver's license, okay? So, so these six people have already been counted for. So how many people are just with bike alone? Four, okay? So look, look at the circle. I got four people with a bike and six people with both, okay? And, and then we can go on with driver's license also. Driver's license, 15 people have a driver's license. If six have both, then nine have only a driver's license by itself. Okay, so if we want to look at this here, how many uh, have a, um, how many don't have either? Well, here's a great question. Four, six, four plus six is uh, 10 plus nine is 19. So 19 people are in here. They have a bike, both, or driver's license. How many people are extra? How many people are on the outside? 11. Okay, so 11 people are in the complement of B and D. So one way you can look at that is say there's B and D. There's a union of B and D, so either, and what we want is the complement of all that. Okay, so we'll play around with that a bit more. It's not that big a deal. Okay, one other thing that we want to look at is uh, this. So I'm going to pause for one. Okay, ta-da. So if you have three uh, subsets and you want to talk about their union, so we have dead northern males. It sounds horrible from the Game of Thrones. It didn't sound this bad when I came up with it. Anyway, let's look at this real quick. Eight of them are dead northern males in the Game of Thrones. So that is the intersection of the north, the male, and dead. So that's this right here. Okay, so that's where you get the eight. Now, where do you get this two? Ten were dead males, but not from the north. Okay, so here are male dead, okay, but they're not in the north part here. So they're this section right in here, just this here. Okay, so if eight, three, ten is total in this area, eight subtract from ten gets you two. Okay, and the same thing works for the rest of this. Okay, we'll work on this in class. Hopefully that first video went pretty well. 
this three thing might have been a bit confusing, but we'll do it in class. Take care.